today. I'm here with Sadie Nardini, the founder of Yoga Shred and Ultimate Yoga app. She has over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, 86,000 followers on Instagram, and today we're going to be talking about how to make six figures teaching online classes while you sleep. She's the founder of the best-selling 21-Day Yoga Shred on Daily Om and one of the most financially abundant mind-body practitioners online. Growing a small business isn't easy, and to be successful, we know three things for sure. You have to work hard, you have to be bold, and you must constantly learn. We're gathering some of the best minds in the business world to share their ideas and strategies with you so you can grow your business easier, be more profitable, and have a lot more fun being a business owner. We're on a mission to connect the world of wellness, and this is the Mind Body Bold Show. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Garcia, and welcome back to another episode of The Bold Show. Sadie, are you ready to be bold? I am. Are you ready to rock? Like Man, I can't wait. I've been waiting for this interview all day. So <laughs> let's get it started. Are you ready? I, I am. So, 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I that think doesn't it's just way happen. Way bigger than that now. Yeah, yeah. It was 107,000, I think, which is that is way bigger because to get 7,000 subscribers is not easy. No, it is not. How did you do that? When did it start? How many videos did you create? You know, I started out when there were no other yoga people okay. or wellness people doing anything online, which just seems archaic. Like, mm -hmm. what was that, 1935? <laughs> but I did. I started a while ago, and I thought, well, no one's coming to my classes in New York City. It's mm -hmm. a huge city. Nobody knows me. So I see that there's, like, people, like, kids jumping off roofs onto trampolines and things, and why not yoga? Okay. Why not stick some yoga stuff on there? So I turned my lamp over in my Brooklyn apartment. I shoved my couch into my kitchen and I did these horribly lit videos. My head was cut off. I don't even know. And I made an impact on this medium mm -hmm. and people started following me and coming to my workshops and my classes because of this crazy thing called YouTube. And the videos are better now. Yeah, they're slightly I've better. I've seen them now. They're yeah. way better. You I got don't some great use the cameras. Lamp anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we dive into a ton of strategy on how people can start doing this themselves, because this is something that a lot of fitness professionals are wanting to do, create some great income that can be generated from outside your five mile radius, right? Yes. So um, how did you get into yoga in the first place? When did that start? Well, I got into yoga reluctantly. I didn't even know I was going to be doing yoga in my entire life. Okay. I was a musician first and it never really crossed my mind, but one day I was 13 okay. and in Iowa in a pool and a grown man cannonballed and jumped on my head in oh. a swimming pool and broke my spine in three places. Oh. My neck in two and my midspine in one. So I was partially paralyzed for two years. The doctors did not know what to do. And they said, you know, either you're going to heal or you won't. So I would invest in a wheelchair in case you need that for the rest of your oh. life. They didn't think I would walk again properly. And one doctor said, you'll definitely never run, Sadie. You running? I'm running. I'm handstanding <laughs> all over the world. I'm rock and roll hands. I can do anything. And because I, my mom found this dusty old yoga book on the shelf, it was called Richard Hittleman's 28 Day Yoga Program. Okay. Like horrible fashion. The woman's in a unitard, like a flesh color unitard. There's nothing horrible about that. I, I have a couple unitards. I do now. I love unitards. <laughs> Her, like, you know, you know, the alignment is questionable, but what it had for me was breathing techniques and gentle yoga. So okay. unlike what people think, because nowadays I'm about the yoga shred and mm -hmm. the hit and yoga and power stuff and fun stuff, but I did not start out like that. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. So that, so now you got into the yoga. Now you started believing in it because it started yes. helping you with your life Absolutely. and you were able to start doing the things that you were maybe afraid you weren't going to be able to ever do again. But why did you start doing it online versus just start a studio where you can have people come to you and go from there? You know, I did both. And I think the real reason that I stopped owning studios in New York City and anywhere and started teaching more online is because I am super lazy. And <laughs> As you're honest. I mean, I am. I like, to, I like to drink Pinot Grigio and eat fries and work out for 20 minutes a day and no more and have a life and a have my life. friends, you know? It's a good life. And I found when I owned a studio, I was really just shackled to mm -hmm. that place and they ex everyone needed me to be there mm -hmm. in order to, for it to thrive. And so I couldn't ever really leave and it just made me feel pretty stifled. Mm -hmm. So I know now that 
in my opinion, only people who are passionate, mm -hmm. studio owners, and that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. should really go that route. Right. Otherwise, online yoga is an awesome way right. that I've found to teach millions of people. I think I reach six million people mm -hmm. a month now wow. online, all told. And I am teaching millions of people now, and I do have real relationships with them. Okay. So a lot of people question, like, is it a cold medium? Can you, can you really know people online? Absolutely. And when wow. I do show up in person, they come to see me sometimes six years later mm -hmm. after I've been in their living rooms with them. Yep. And I feel them, and they feel me, and that's a family. So how it. many videos have you created since you started your first video? Countless. You like know, more than 500? Yes. Really? Probably more than 1,000. Wow. If you count the mini workouts and moments yeah. too, definitely more than 1,000. All right, so let's get down to the stuff that everyone wants to know. <laughs> All right, how do you make money by showing people how to you know, do yoga online? Yeah, because right, yoga, there's so much competition for yoga. Mm -hmm. There's tons of yoga teachers, so how could you make money? Right. Well, this is what stops most people from doing it. Okay. So I, I like to dream... Uh, immensely because I think dreaming tiny is already taken. Mm -hmm. right? it's, it's actually very crowded in that Yes, world. it's crowded. It's crowded in the, well, I guess I'll just teach classes like everyone. It's fine if you love to do that, and I do too, but I don't want anyone to have to only show up physically in order to be able to receive abundance mm -hmm. in all forms from what they give out. Okay. So for me, moving online was just an amazing practice of opening myself to freedom. So let's say I am your target customer. Well, first off, who am I if I'm, if I'm your target customer? Who's the perfect demographic? You are not my target customer. I know I'm not. Because you're if a I guy. Was, if I was, right? Ladies. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Knowing my target demographic, mm -hmm. which are women between the ages of 35 and 60. Okay. But I have a lot of younger women too. Okay. And uh, just you know, people who want to get fit and be empowered. So I seek out those people who want to be strong and fit at mm -hmm. any age, but want to also be real and have the aforementioned fries. Okay. So there's a huge middle ground, not polar people who are really into like fitness. Like it's all about kale sandwiches. And squats every <laughs> second of the day. Kale and, like, chips, which no one really likes kale no chips. No one likes kale chips. No one likes kale chips, let's or, be honest really dark chocolate. Like the really dark <laughs> chocolate, no one likes yeah. it. It tastes like dust. <laughs> Moving forward, my target demographic is not the polar ones. The ones that are really into classical yoga and just like, leave me alone, mm -hmm. I'm in my studio. Or people who are super into muscular fitness and need mm -hmm. to look perfect and need to like spend right. their whole lives in the gym. I'm for this huge middle ground of person who wants to eat a little healthier, but what they love wants to work out but have a life, mm -hmm. and wants to get something done in 20 minutes that you could go out and spend two hours doing, but why? Okay, so now you know how to get in front of those people because yes. from what you said, you have cracked the Facebook advertising code. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. So Facebook's an amazing tool because you can say, I only wanna show my stuff to women between 35 and 46, that live here, 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 mm -hmm. that like this or watch this. So you can get really specific. So you use Facebook ads to really get in front of these people for the first time, right? Yes. So let's say I am that, I'm a, I'm a th let's say 40 year old woman mm -hmm. and everything else fits, whatever that is, right? And so now I'm on Facebook, I'm checking out what my family's doing, I'm checking out what my ex-boyfriend's doing and then all of a sudden here you are. What kind of thing do I see? Is it an uh, image ad? Is it a video ad? What do I see? You might see one of both of those things, but okay. what you will see is simplicity. Okay. And this is where I think a lot of people make a mistake with marketing. They try to describe everything they're doing in one ad mm -hmm. and the text gets really long. And if I see a text that's more than two lines long, I'm not even gonna read it. Okay. It's, it's too much. I'm already invo involved in my Facebook, in my friend's dog, okay. going to the hospital or like a cute kitty video. I'm not gonna go, oh, well, let me read that whole thing. So let's say I see your ad just a couple sentences. What's an example of what you might say? I might have a cool photo that's not me. Okay. Because if people see me, they and they see oh a, you know hit plus yoga mm -hmm. or let's let's uh, let's work out together 20 minutes a day and they see the mohawk. The tendency is to think it's going to be too intense or mm -hmm. I'm some crazy lady that's just here to ruin your day, um, and that's been proven by. <laughs> 
by, by market test. testing, yes. Okay, so, so you put somebody that maybe fits the demographic? I put somebody that fits the demographic and something that is visually arresting. For me, actually a little more stylish okay. than like, rah, like fitness. I want something that looks artistic. Like the Lululemon or? Like a black and white photo oh. of a woman doing something beautiful and it's just really um, kind of contrasty and awesome or, or that in color. Sometimes she's naked but it's not inappropriate mm -hmm. it just looks really beautiful and you can't tell it's mm -hmm. nice that's cool and people will look at it not because it's shocking but because it's kind of beautiful mm -hmm. and it represents this empowerment and this and this gorgeousness mm -hmm. and lusciousness that i like to promote and then they click on the link so well, i can well, get people so the picture it. is great but what, am, what do I think I'm getting? Like, mm -hmm. what does it say? It will say, this new yoga is amazing. Okay, cool. So then I click on it. And then do I go to like a landing page? Go to a landing page okay. that is short and sweet as well. So for everybody listening and watching, a landing page is basically like a, uh, kind of like a one page website that you would create with the sole objection or mm -hmm. objective of getting somebody from the ad to a little bit more of a detailed version of what that ad was saying. Yes. And then getting them to sold to give you their information yeah. in order to get to the next step in your funnel. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Well, what I found works really well, and this is for me, because funneling works really well for so many people. I know that you right. teach that and, and you and you're an expert in that. I don't I don't know that much about technology. So what I do is this, and this has been really successful for me. Um, they go to the landing page, and mm -hmm. the landing page says, Hi, welcome. We have a tribe of thousands of people doing this. It's really cool. It's simple. It will give you more results in less time. And then I give a little sample of it, which is really important because people, you don't, you want to try it on before you buy it. Right. But if you get too much, then why buy it? Right. So, you know, and then right at the end, it says, get this course now. And mm -hmm. it goes right to the sales. All right. And guys, just so you know, there's more than one way to get in shape. There's more than one way to make money. Mm -hmm. So you chose not to use funnels, but what'd you do last month? What were your sales? One course alone sold $148,000. In one month? Yes. One month. And in advertising, how much do you have to spend in order to make that? Um, about $9,000. Is that a good return on investment? People invest in houses to be able to get like a <laughs> 10 to 15% return and you're just crushing that, yes. right? So the, the point here is you just really knew how to take this thing, yoga, and be able to get it in front of more of the right people and in a unique way, you learned the digital game and found a way to make money off of it without you having to go into a studio and work on your own terms. Yes, it's freedom. It's wow. freedom from stress around all of those things and, and freedom to be able to have your time back, okay. more money back so that you can then help the world and yourself with that. Okay. And um, exactly. Not so let's being say I a, sign up. Mm -hmm. I sign up, what am I paying and what am I getting? You can pay $10, $25, or $40 for the same 21-day course okay. where I lead you through it. Now, we do it on a sliding scale because I really always want to allow people to offer what they can mm -hmm. instead of one set price. And it seems to encourage people because of that generosity, right. which I did not expect, to pay more. Okay. I rarely get a $10 donation. It's right. usually one of the other two. So do you right. upsell into bigger programs? Because that's a lot of sales to get to 148. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> so you just made a lot of sales. <laughs> yes, that because I make it accessible. And here's the thing, I think everything I do is accessible. In my opinion, people are really tired of complexity. Mm -hmm. Our lives are busy enough. I mean, you know, we have so much going on and keeping it simple, like here's a, here's a thing you can have, simply put, click on it, here's what it is. You can do it in your own time. Mm -hmm. 21 days in a row is a challenge, or you can just do it in five years if you mm. want, and you'll have it forever to come back to. It's a great resource for you. 10 bucks, $25, $40. Give people hope, right? When you first started, you're like, all right, I'm gonna make my first ad. Did you crush it? Did you get 148 no. on a 9,000 return? No. Okay, so I just want people to not no, feel bad when so they run bad. and they go, this doesn't work. So tell me how long it took for you to start making a return and, uh, and, and what the failures were like in the beginning. Okay, so the failures in the beginning were spectacular. Like if, if, if this was a holiday, the failure was a, a holiday, it would be the 4th of July because all the failures were like the fireworks. It's beautiful. Okay, um, so I thought in order to Facebook market, you had to basically go try to get in front of every single possible mm -hmm. person and audience. 
So I would choose the yoga. Do not ever choose yoga. Really? Because there's all sorts of types of yoga. So I'm in front of now six to 12 million people mm -hmm. or 30 million people now that like restorative yoga or this So you feature. choose a specific type of yoga? Okay. I choose a specific type like of yoga. power yoga? Or? I look for moms at home, like websites okay. for, for Facebook, Facebook pages for at-home moms or like high-intensity interval training moms or fit moms and wow. because they're at home more or less, you know, and then mm. they have to, you know, they need something to do at home and they want to get fit at home. So this is like stay-at-home moms and it's yoga, but it's, it's power yoga or it's people's pages that I feel that I'm like that their audience might like something else too, mm -hmm. because I hope we can share as teachers. I hope you use this information and choose my page on Facebook to market to, because mm -hmm. we should all learn from different people. So I start pulling from people who are kind of like me, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's been really successful. But at first, I was like very clunky, like yoga and CrossFit, you know. Oh wow, even them. Just well, because I had yoga shred, so it's the marriage oh, of, it, of kind of both, but based on yoga poses, it's mm -hmm. kind of awesome. Well, what I want to know is, did it take weeks or months or longer for you to finally get into a rhythm where you're like, okay, it's working now? It took me a good year. Really? Because I'm stubborn and I thought I knew how to do everything. Did you almost quit? Oh yeah, I was like, I hated Facebook ads. I was mm -hmm. like, this doesn't work. It's, you know, it's the same as a lot of other stuff and I don't understand it. I'm technically not savvy. I got very doubtful and frustrated, mm -hmm. but then I found YouTube tutorials. Mm -hmm. You can Google anything that you want to learn and somebody- Even yoga. Even yoga and somebody <laughs> who's doing it better than you are, honey, will teach you how to do it and you can use those tools to totally transcend. So. Once I started actually studying mm -hmm. what I needed to learn, it was a month. And I turned it all around in one month. So when you upload all these videos to YouTube, do you just hit the upload button, get the file in there and you're done? Or do you do things to make sure it's optimized and there's things done on the outside, the description, all that, to make sure it reaches as many people as possible? Well, I used to not do any of the things I'm about to describe to you, but now I do them all. And, and this is all about choosing what works for you and containing yourself to do it every time. Because if people like anything in a relationship, it is consistency. Mm -hmm. You don't want someone who's there for you one day and then not there for you and right. there. And it's, you know, those are the people we drunk dial and text <laughs> inappropriately <laughs> later in life. We don't want to do that anymore. Right. We need consistent relationships, including with our own social media and our own marketing. So what I do now is my YouTube page has revolutionized. I put thumbnail, nice uh, icons that I designed in Canva.com. I saw that. If you guys get a chance, check out our YouTube channel because all your thumbnails, they're very nicely designed. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't know what thumbnails are, it's like the preview. So when you look at the right column, you see those little square ads and you kind of have an idea as to what this video is going to be about. So you click on it. But like anything else, if it's more drawing, your eye will go to it. Yes. And so you probably use the same technique using Facebook on the thumbnails, right? Yes. Simplicity and um, take, take everything through and through line. Like my, all my yoga shred videos look the same as the thumbnail. Their titles are different. All okay. my tu anatomy tutorials look the same. They're different designs, but they look the same. The mm -hmm. yoga for beginners, the yoga for weight loss, whatever it is, that all looks the same. And I am not a designer but I'm not paying 20 grand for someone to do it for me. What do you use to design? Canva.com. I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah, I Canva's love that awesome. site. It makes it so easy. Yep. You can be a brilliant designer right now and they already have the, no um, one would know. the thumbnails for <laughs> you. And all you do, instead of, instead of just letting them choose your thumbnail from the video stills, which mine are always like, you know, I mean, there's none of them that are cute ever. I'm, so my, my nickname with Sam is Mr. Screenshot yeah. because he takes so many screenshots. I, there's no good screenshot of me. Right now, no. this, there's nothing good no, here. No, we can't get anything. So <laughs> if you stop the camera at any point, it would just be ridiculous. This is terrible. So, I, so when it says add custom thumbnail at the bottom of your YouTube video, mm -hmm. instead of letting them choose, go to Canva, get the YouTube thumbnail icon, design it mm -hmm. yourself. Just choose one. It's fun. It's easy. It's awesome. And download it and then that's what I upload on YouTube. Okay. I have descriptions that are the same if you go onto my YouTube channel. They're, they're, hey, you like this, check this out. Here's an online course you might like. Here's a description of the video and keep in touch on my socials. It's the same. So now that you've mastered this, do you by any chance teach others how to do it? 
whether it's for yoga or something else? Well, I just did my first presentation on it here at the Mind Body Bold conference, ah. and it went gangbusters. People were really happy about it. Okay. We had a Q and A session that continued on at okay. the pool for another hour. Of course. But I am going to make an online course about how to make an online course mm -hmm. and market it simply and effectively without messing with all the other confusing stuff. Okay. Then you can branch out later if you want, but you know it's nice to know exactly where to start and what works. And I want and welcome the competition mm -hmm. because I don't think there's competition for your own path. Right. It's you getting in or out of your own way. Right. So welcome to the tribe. Let's all do this together. So let's say somebody watching or listening goes, whenever she comes out with that course, I want in. Yeah. How do they stay, like how do they follow you? Is, is there a social media platform that you go, oh yeah, as soon as I launch it, I'm posting it here. Where should they follow you? SadieNardini.com. No, oh, just go to the website. Yes, go to the okay. website, but you can stay in touch and I post about all the new courses I have coming up on my Facebook page. It's still my central hub. Okay. And that is facebook.com slash Sadie Yoga. Mm -hmm. So you've essentially learned how to not only do yoga, teach yoga, create amazing videos, because they're not like the way you used to have them with the head cut off. Nope. But you've also learned how to run digital ads to where you can spend nine grand and make 148,000, which is insane, right? So if let's say somebody watching just goes, man, I, I want to at least taste it. I want to see what it's like. Maybe I like it, right? If they had to go back to you, your, when you first started, what did you do in order to start learning these things? How can they get their feet wet? So I'm a really DIY kind of girl. Mm -hmm. Do it yourself, myself. So I like Facebook. I find that that market has disposable income. It is, everybody knows, it's the, it's the biggest selling mm -hmm. platform so far. Um, in fact, it encompasses all the other ones pretty much. Really? So I decided to focus on that platform. And then I dove into the wild and crazy world of YouTube and, and other Googling tutorials. So you just watch a lot of YouTube tutorials on Facebook ads, yes. creating ads. I knew okay. ads were the thing because you can't rely on your existing audience. It will mm -hmm. deplete them. And plus, most people don't have big audiences. Well, the, the most successful entrepreneurs say that if you can't push a button and get more leads, then your business is, is going to be yes. tough to scale. Yes. And it's not about creating 25 courses. For mm -hmm. me, it's about creating one great course that you love. Mm -hmm. Use your iPhone. Use a friend if you have to. Just make sure the lighting is natural and good. Right. The sound is good. There aren't any air conditioners and stuff and you're in frame Sadie of the image you know and and get something that adds value because if you add value the money will naturally follow the follows will naturally follow and then get out there to the seven billion people in this world and tell them where this one course is instead of making 700 courses and trying to get three people to each one right. so focus in learn about Facebook ads best practices and I haven't found anyone else who's distilled them the way that I do that I find is very accessible for the beginner or the intermediate person trying to understand all of this and kind of uh, call out and extract what works so yes I'm making the course but right now look at Facebook advertising don't go too broad mm -hmm. and make the image very simple and attractive and the text one or two lines and put it out to the right people. Boost it for $5 a day. You don't have to spend nine grand. Mm -hmm. You'll start getting a nice return. Once you learn what works, you can spend yeah. a little more. And you can, yes. Once you learn what works though, if you're like, oh, I got 50 clicks for $5 a day for a right. week. Now I'm going to boost it to $150. doesn't work that way. It does not work. <laughs> it, it will freak out the algorithms. I even had a Facebook people tell me that. You probably know that. Mm -hmm. So it's like well, a what, good what happens is there's tiers, right? Yeah. So you have all these people, let's say like 6% or 5% of people really fit that demographic. But once you exhaust that, you spend more, you start diving into people that are a little less fitting for that demographic. They're close, but they're not there. And that drives up your cost per lead. Yes. And it's like any relationship, you have to pay attention to it and mm -hmm. see what's working and what isn't working and go back into those ads and really kind of dial down and see what's going on. And, right. ex and just like, like your friendships or your relationships, just delete the stuff that's not working mm -hmm. and the people who aren't interested, bye-bye, bye, -bye, bye mm -hmm. Felicia, <laughs> and start to gain the ones that are. And you'll understand yourself better through that process. And there's an app for that. Mm -hmm. Facebook ads app, it's real easy. It's pretty cool, we use it too. Yeah. Well, I got to say, Sadie, I'm very impressed, and there's a, there obviously is a big reason why you were asked to speak on the big stage here, and uh, have all the followers that you have, and I have no doubt that you're going to have a line buying your course, because what you're doing is it's pretty incredible. So I appreciate you sharing so much of what you learned. I know you paid with failure, you paid with money, you paid with time and energy, 
and uh, you're giving it away for free. And that says a lot. So thank you very much. And for all of those that were listening and watching, thank you guys very much. And we will see you next week. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this episode, then subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, and to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode. You can get all the links by going to boldshow.com. Thanks, and see you next time.